Pulaski Memorial Hospital is a 25-bed critical access county hospital, and we're independent. Our difficulty is a lot of our residents live in small towns. A lot of those small towns are scattered on the outskirts of our county, and actually some live closer to other hospitals than they do to Pulaski Memorial. If you had some chest pain, that would be something to call a doctor about. We have to be very, very aggressive in how we maintain our service area, and the way we're trying to do that is based on our quality. Well, and that will help too, passing that on, because after you're done... Nurses... Focusing on the adverse drug events for the hospital um, has been very important. We have a very active medication safety committee. They might be on some very new medications as a hospital inpatient than they were at home. The Warfarin project that our pharmacy director had implemented in doing some data collection and looking at how we can improve those outcomes, especially preventing harm for our patients, our inpatients who are on Warfarin. I think one of the pharmacist's great fear is that there's going to be a medication error. There's going to be an adverse drug event that's going to cause harm. The HIN protocols and recommendations were important to us because they focus on evidence-based interventions, things that are proven to improve quality of care. So for us, it just let us focus on what was really important. Some of the best practices that we've implemented as a result of the HUN is from the Medication Safety Committee. We look at electronic alerts for our nurses through our computer system. We do bedside barcoding here, and that's been very helpful for the nursing staff. If the nursing does an assessment, then they flag that for a major asset for Pulaski Memorial Hospital has been our access to the Hospital Engagement Network and to the Indiana Hospital Association's dedicated HEN staff. He may he want to expand right. some of and the I'm things that are being done. Right. That has brought to us, at virtually no cost, the ability to bring people on site to help us if we were to need them. I think we should just keep her on close to what she was getting at home. Also, a lot of free webinars and workshops that enable us to do the types of best practice sharing that a lot of major hospitals have within their systems. Just keep an eye on her for the next day or two. One of the things that we've implemented throughout the nursing departments is a no interruption zone. A couple of the nursing departments have dedicated medication administration rooms. Some departments, like our emergency room, does not. And so what we've done is tried to identify the area by the med dispense, which is our automated medication dispensing cabinet, so that when a nurse is in that area preparing her medications, that no one will interrupt her. For a small critical access hospital to have a sophisticated level of quality program that we have, it's very unusual. The biggest thing that we have improved with help from the hand from a medication safety standpoint has been our reduction in medication errors as it relates to warfarin by over 40%. Put in their discharge folder. So that in 2012, we had zero medication errors with the drug warfarin. That's an unbelievable level at any hospital. Thanks for tuning in to h and Daily's special coverage of the Health Research and Educational Trust's Hospital Engagement Network. This project has been brought to you by the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Innovation, the Partnership for Patients Initiative, the American Hospital Association, and the Health Research and Educational Trust.